It's a really big deal because the Pope is not just the like CEO of a big corporation or something. The Pope is a person who is elected by the cardinals to serve as the vicar of St. Peter, who is believed by Catholics to be the first Pope and to receive his authority to lead the church directly from Jesus. It's in the scriptures in Matthew 16, 18, where Jesus says that Peter will be the rock upon which the church is founded. There's this doctrine, it's called Petrine Doctrine, that says that each of his successors in the position of Bishop of Rome, Peter's believed to be the first Bishop of Rome, then inherit that special authority directly from Jesus to lead the Pope, to lead the church, and to, to speak with the uh, authority of the Holy Spirit. So when someone says, I don't want to do that anymore, um, that's really rare, and it opens the door to a lot of political and theological questions about how this person should be seen or viewed, um, uh, this ex-Pope, and, you know, frankly, questions for the legitimacy of the successor. It's an intercessory role and an interpretive role. So the Pope is still a human being, right. right? But he has this special authority to interpret the will of God um, to the Catholic Church, okay, to, to believers all around the world. So it's a unique position. I mean, it's not, it's not a position that is, is really readily transferable. It's going to be awkward. And, you know, the last time that a pope voluntarily resigned, or at least we think it was voluntarily, was in 1294, it was Celestine V. And his successor ultimately had to have him jailed, basically placed under house arrest um, to keep those people that were kind of on the side of the old pope um, from, from receiving communications from him or, or, or you know, allowing him to um, influence the course of affairs. And so, yeah, it's, it's a pretty awkward position here. Well, it could go two directions, okay? A thousand years from now, he may be remembered as the pope who resigned or tried to resign because the Council of Cardinals, uh, College of Cardinals may not accept his resignation readily. Um, it also might be, you know, a harbinger of a change that says that the papal position now, I mean, no pope has ever resigned from being tired and in ill health before. I mean, this is just unprecedented, at least since we have really good records, and that goes back almost 2,000 years. Um, it may set a, a precedent for future popes, right? I mean, that they will say that there comes a time when a pope is not in the kind of spiritual, I mean, uh, physical or mental condition to, to lead the church and that there will be retired popes. But that's, that's taking a big gamble, it's taking a risk. One of the reasons why papal resignations have been rare is because when popes are elected, there are, this is a time during the election process when factions and differences of opinion and, um, you know, just theological questions are openly discussed and talked about and there may be some bitterness and rancor for those people whose candidates didn't win. But the idea is that once that pope is ordained as the Bishop of Rome, he has this authority and he will have it for his lifetime, right? And so that kind of, that kind of gives him a, a, that special position and also kind of quells factionalism for a little while because you can't do anything about it. Um, this pope may indeed be resigning for reasons of ill health. There may be nothing behind it other than he's resigning for reasons of ill health. But it kind of opens the door if there are future resignations, how do you know? Um, that these are not under pressure, that these are not politically motivated, that these are, you know, that these are not not really problematic. And this is an issue that, I mean, I think the Catholic Church, if they accept this resignation readily, it may, they may come to regret it, you know, this idea of the replaceable pope. Well, usually the process is that the senior cardinal calls together the conclave, the College of Cardinals, of course, announces that the Pope has died and that there is a time for, that there will be an election. The, uh, the cardinals come together and there is a process. They're locked under lock and key and kept in conclave um, until the new Pope is elected. And there is a process by which the ballots are taken and the people begin to gather around Vatican Square, right, because they burn the... Um, the straw and they, for the white smoke if a pope is elected and a black smoke means that they haven't rece received the majority necessary for the new pope. So that's usually the process. It's, it's going to be, they don't have, as far as I know, any kind of process that says as of 8 p.m. on the 28th, which is when the pope has said he's going to resign, that this person no longer has the spiritual authority uh, to be the vicar of St. Peter, and is it at that point, 8.01 p.m., that the senior cardinals will call this together. I mean, we're just really, 
we're, this is kind of uncharted waters, so I think they're going to have to make up a bit as they go along um, how exactly that transference of authority will take place. It, mm -hmm. it is a lifelong position. I mean, normally you, are, you become Bishop of Rome, and then you, be, you are Bishop of Rome until you die. And most of us can remember, um, after the long pontificate of John Paul II, that, I mean, he became visibly weakened during the last few years of his papacy. And he kind of decided that he would not he would not resign, but set this example of servant, suffering servant leadership, right? And we kind of saw that process. The Pope not only taught Catholics how to live, but how to die. Cardinal, I mean, Cardinal Ratzinger, Pope Benedict has made a different choice, obviously. Um, and it's, again, it's, it's pretty unprecedented. Um, the last popes that have resigned, it's been under schism when there have been, for instance, two different popes elected by different parts of European society and the council has to decide which of them is pope, one of them has to resign. You can't have two popes. Uh, in other cases, uh, Celestine V found himself in a position that he didn't feel equipped to handle and after less than a year as pope, far less than a year as pope, he decides to step down and that just really caused, but really he could not control the College of Cardinals. None of this seems to be the issue with, with Pope Benedict. I mean, he's making this decision at the, toward the end of his life that he is not physically or mentally equipped to handle the job any longer. And as I said, this is just unprecedented. Oh no, none whatsoever. I mean, being Pope is a really cool job because you get to name who the, college, who the cardinals are who will elect your successor. So all of the current cardinals are either people that have been picked by Benedict or by his predecessor, John Paul, and they had rather similar political views and policies. So these cardinals will come together and you know it's probably the case that that uh, the Pope has talked to a few of them about the future of the church but at the point where he resigns absolutely not. He will probably go into retirement either in the papal summer house at Castel Godolfo or in a hermitage within the Vatican. So there are, I mean, he will be removed from the process. Well, we never know what's going on secretly in the Vatican among the highest level of Vatican officials. I mean, I can't believe that he did not uh, discuss this with a few people. And there even been, if you were paying attention, some hints that he might choose resignation. For instance, he shows a particular devotion to his predecessor who did resign, uh, Celestine V. He visited his tomb several times in 2009 and 2010. At one point, he placed his pallium, which is the symbol of papal authority, on the tomb and prayed. So people have, have looked at that, you know, is that a clue that, that he was planning to resign as he reached a certain point in his life? Um, but coming when it did, I think most of the world is shocked today. Um, you know, he's got to have a few confidants, but most of the world is shocked, and I think most of the leadership of the Catholic Church. And in fact, he gave his resignation speech, first in Latin, um, and evidently, I mean, the word is, I have not seen tapes or anything like that, but evidently the, some of the cardinals were just unaware of what he was saying. It just, and you can see, according to people who've reported, you can see the shock in their faces. So I think that even the College of Cardinals was stunned by this, um, this, this decision. It's huge. Um, I don't. I don't know how to, uh, you know, add to this. Um, it's historically unprecedented. It's theologically problematic. Um, it's going to be talked about. It's one of the, you know, in the history of the Catholic Church, a thousand years from now, this will be talked about, and that's, you know, Vatican II and the resignation of the Pope will be the legacy from my lifetime of the of the Catholic Church. So. Very good.